A very good afternoon and a warm welcome to everyone. Myself, Shraddha Mishra, Ambassador of Change from Gedi, that is Global Education and Training Institute, and I'll be the host for the live talk today. I'm honored to tell that Getty is founded and conceptualized by Dr. Sunita Gandhi with a broad vision of spectacular education. It is one of the most premium training institutes of India. Under it, we provide two types of training. One is pre-service where we train aspiring teachers who wish to be outstanding teachers in future. And the other is in-service where we train teachers who are already in service. On these live forums, we also conduct live talks where we invite bureaucrats, policymakers, researchers, educators from around the globe to enlighten us with varied educational practices carried out. Under the spectacular vision of Dr. Gandhi, we are continuously working towards bringing out transformative changes in education and hence these endeavors. Today, this afternoon, I'm very thrilled and privileged to have with us on board Ms. Chhasi Ravi Kumar. She is International Abacus Senior Instructor, Braino Brain, Thiruvallur, Tamil Nadu. Welcome to you, ma'am. She completed her schooling in Uti, which is a beautiful hill station in South India. She graduated in Coimbatore. After it, she realized her true dream is always to be connected with kids. She believed every child is unique and deserves a caring, inspiring, and engaging atmosphere in which to grow emotionally, intellectually, and socially. As an educator, she wants to help kids to meet their fullest potential. She is an Abacus trainer in Brain of Brain International since 2003. In the COVID times last year, she empowered kids in public speaking skills. She started her website www.teenyenglish.org through which hundreds of students are benefiting and conversing with every other country kid. She received Best Faculty Award. She received Overall Championship in International Competition in Brain of Brain and her students received Champion Gold and Silver Medals in Brain of Brain International Competition. So you have already created benchmarks, ma'am, and there's so much and so forth to learn from you. Very hearty welcome to you. Yes. And now, without much ado, I would like you to introduce your topic, and then we can proceed with the presentation that you have prepared. Over to you, ma'am. Thank you, Shraddha. Thank you. Greetings to everyone. I am uh, very happy to be here. Uh, thank you, Getty, for this uh, wonderful opportunity. And let me start my uh, emotional intelligence. This is very close to my heart. <clears throat> This chapter is very close to my heart. Let me start. Yes. Aham Brahmasmi. That is, I am divine. This is the great sayings from the great Upanishads in, from the 5th century. Everything starts from uh, I, from within us. So, <clears throat> if you have to, uh, if you realize that... Uh, Everything starts from us. We love everyone. We don't have the hatred to everyone. We don't have grudge to anyone. Um, let, let me move on to the next one. Yes. This is Thirumula. He lived in the 3rd century. Uh, he told in Tamil, that is, everything is whatever thing in the universe that is within us, whatever within us, it is in the universe. So if, uh, if we have all the love within us, so it will explain. It, uh, it, um, or that is, um, if you have the realization that we can love each other. Uh, let me move on to the next one. So, what is emotion? The internal conscious state that we infer in ourselves and others. So, emotions are our personal experiences. We cannot actually see the feelings. We observe the behavior and uh, infer our emotions. Then what is intelligence? Intelligence is the expert differ on an uh, exact definition of intelligence, but most agree that 
intelligent behavior has at least two components the ability to learn from the experience the ability to adapt to the uh, surrounding environment so to uh, adding these two what is that emotional intelligence the ability to understand our own feelings and the feelings of others uh, for motivating ourselves and for managing our emotions effectively in our relationship emotional intelligence um sometimes it is referred to as people smartness yes nowadays um, um many uh, uh, marriages are uh, breaking down into divorce this is mainly because of uh, their low emotional intelligence they don't know how to handle the emotion so they uh, the couple uh, uh, the couple thinks that uh, they they are showing their love but they are controlling others that is not love what is love we have to love each other and we have we should not control others uh, lisa nova she is a great astronaut i, I think everyone knows that uh, becoming an astronaut is a very tough job uh, it it has to um, uh, they have to be expertise in uh, science and engineering um, they need to at least 1000 hours to uh, their pilot experience and the next one is they have to be physically fit and they have to be very strong uh, lisa nova was all of these things Uh, she was one of the fortunate few to be selected to become an astronaut <clears throat> but in the family issue she was arrested for attempting murder why why you think uh, this happened to her this is because of her uh, low emotional intelligence she didn't think of her family uh, she had three children she didn't think of her future of the three kids Uh, she had one son and two daughters uh, she uh, she didn't ke- kept everything in mind in her mind she just went for a, a attempted murder and immediately the police caught and all her astronaut uh, um, that uh, label everything went off she was put into the jail she was very very intelligent but emotionally she is not intelligent she was, she lost her family everything she uh, she lost her fame everything so in this modern era what we have to learn what we have to uh, uh, teach our kids is how to handle the emotions everyone is wearing the smart watches nowadays isn't it uh, what it shows uh, the smart watches shows uh, how many steps we are walking Mm, then uh, it it shows our uh, heart rate everything it is uh, uh, showing if we have uh, our uh, uh, emotional watch imagine if uh, scientists are uh, discovering the emotional watch it will be showing if your anger most of the time we don't know uh, what uh, emotion we are in uh, we don't have that uh, we don't have that knowledge whether we are anger whether we are uh, Uh, in uh, grudge nothing we are uh, uh, knowing so if you are having a smart watch like that emotional smart watch if you are anger it will show a red light then we will come to the uh, know the know about that uh, uh, red light then we can control our emotion then it is not controlling we will handle that situation oh my, my i am in the anger state so i have to move i have to shift my uh, thought to the love state like that we can uh, shift our emotion but that is not possible without we we have to handle our emotion we have to handle ourselves there is no smart watch yet okay next <coughs> let me move on to the next one that is the yes this is the great sage thiruvalluvar he told about the emotional intelligence in the uh, 5000 years back manathuladu pola kaati oruvarukku inathuladavum arivu wisdom appears to rest in the mind wisdom is 
uh, not in the brain, it rests in the mind, but it really exists to the man in his companions. This is the social, we are, man is a social being. So IQ is, we can measure that IQ, that man, uh, he, if he is uh, uh, good in mathematics, we can measure. But EQ, we have to learn, we can learn throughout our life and we can improve our uh, emotional portion. It is not fixed, it can be improved throughout our life. But what about IQ? It, um, it is established in mid-teens, it can't increase, it predicts only 10 to 20% of our life success. 90% of success of outstanding leaders is attributable to emotional intelligence, which is twice as important than intellectual intelligence. Emotional intelligence is therefore an ability, it is an ability to understand need and the feelings of oneself and the other people. So with emotional intelligence, we can uh, manage our own feeling we can, and we can respond in the appropriate way. Then the next one is, how do I improve my emotional intelligence? I told you that uh, we can improve our emotional intelligence to a lifelong. We can learn, improve. The first one comes the self-awareness. What is uh, self-awareness? <coughs> self-awareness is the ability to. We have to self-reflect. Most of, most of the time, we ask ourselves the wrong questions. When we attempt to resolve some internal conflict, immediately we will ask, why did this happen to me? Why did this to me? Oh my God, what I have done? What, what is this? Uh, why this to me? Why this to me? We are asking often. But instead of that, why this to me, we have to ask what I have to do next. So replace that why question to what. So that is the self-awareness. So what can I do to overcome uh, this fear? What, what made me to get that anger? If you are angry, so what made me to get that anger? Happy, sir, any feeling, you put the what question. So you will be self-aware. For example, um, uh, you have gone to the movie, the theater, there will be a white screen. In the white screen, many things, the fight will come, uh, the fire will be there, the river will be flowing, the love scene will be coming, everything comes. But the white screen remains the same. So that is the self-awareness. This... Uh, Awareness, if we have, we'll watch the life very enjoyable. Everything, uh, everything, whatever thing is happening, it is happening for some reason. So we have to be self-aware. Uh, then, in uh, this is the traffic jam photo I took from the net. Uh, in this, uh, we'll be uh, sometimes uh, when we are going to city side, or in a bank, lure and all, we'll see uh, the mm, traffic jams. If we are struck in the traffic jam, we'll be, uh, we feel it is very horrible. But imagine uh, we are uh, flying in a plane. When we watch from above, above the plane, the traffic jam will look so beautiful. It will look so loud, I mean, how uh, uh, lively the vehicles are going like this. The life is like that. So we have to uh, uh, see in others' perception. That is the golden key. And the next one is the self-regulation. What is life? It is from B to D. That is life. That is from birth to death. That is life. In between B and D, what is there? C is there. C means choices. From uh, uh, morning to night, we, we are given many choices, whether to have coffee or tea, uh, whether to get up from bed at 6 o'clock or 7 o'clock. So every, it is our part to choose which is good for us, 
uh, which is good for us, we have to pick up. Uh, in the couples, um, many couples, I told you, know, they are getting diverse because they don't know which one to choose. If they think about their kids, they won't do that. They won't diverse. So because it is for the, uh, in Tamil, we will say, um, it is for thousand, a thousand years the plant. We have to adjust with everyone. We have to accept the other person. Whatever he or she, we have to accept. And we have to enjoy our life. So, in uh, while going from birth to death, there will be many diversions will be there. Uh, it, everyone is having the smartphone. Uh, when we click on the Google map, if you are going in a wrong way, uh, it will show us. Uh, we, you have to divert. It will show us the another way, and again we will come to the main road. Life is like that. We have to regulate ourselves. Then and there, if you are going, we are taking the wrong route, we have to come again to the correct route. And if we are, uh, if you are, uh, if we have to attend one uh, important meeting, we have to park our car. We are coming in a car, we, we got a space in the, uh, in between two cars. At that time, Another person is coming there and uh, suddenly he is parking that car. What we will do then? We want to stop there and shout at him, why you have done that? Why you have parked there? What we will do? We will just move away. We will just move away. We will search for another place. Okay, we shouldn't, uh, have, that, is the con that is the handling of emotion. And the motivation, <clears throat> yes. Motivation is, motivation won't come from others. It should be within us. We have to realize this is our life. We have to be happy. We have to enjoy our life. It is from within us. Uh, if you are going for a wedding party of others, what we will do? We will just go and sit. We'll eat nicely and we'll comment about others. See, her sari, uh, what is this food? This food is not nice. Uh, this, uh, this sambar is not tasting nice. We'll comment everyone. Uh, we'll sit there and we don't uh, take responsibility. We just go and uh, we'll come out. But if it is our wedding party, what we will do? We will uh, check everything, nook and corner. We will uh, check whether this dress suits for me, uh, if the guests are coming, what food we have to give. We will first go and taste the food. We will taste the food. If it is good, yeah, it is okay. Uh, then uh, about the arrangements, everything we will see. Our life is like that. We have to take care of ourselves. We have to motivate ourselves. That is the next one. Then going to the social skills, uh, we have to see in others' perception. That is the, already I told you about the perception, it is the golden key. Reality uh, can be so complex that equally valid observations from different per perspectives can appear to be contradicted. One may say four and uh, no, 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 he is saying three. Empathy, empathy, let me show one small video. Our person of the week, sitting in the crowd of thousands at the Arizona Diamondbacks game, a 12-year-old boy watching the game, about to do something that would catch not only their eyes in the announcer's booth, but ours too. We couldn't believe what we were seeing. It was the fourth inning. A player tosses a ball into the stands. Two little boys wanted it, but only Ian McMillan would get it. Oh, look at that young Brewers fan. Now, wait a minute. He is, did he get? No. Oh, he boy. sour. He is sour. The Diamondback fan got it. The announcers watching with their own play-by-play. -play. Well, oh, he's bummed. Are out. you kidding me? This kid's going to do this? Oh, yeah. yeah, that is big. Time oh my right goodness! There. What a nice young man. Well, he's got a Diamondback hat, but we have to get something for that kid. We got, in the red. We got I can't believe I just witnessed that. That is That's just awesome. You that, young man are a young star. Men are awesome. The game would go on. Ian having given up his prized catch. But then a phone call. It seemed someone had seen his kindness on TV. 
He's being told right now that he's being praised on TV. Yeah, he's big league. He is Late today, league. we met Ian, too. I thought it was the right thing to do. Like, I saw the kid. He was really sad, so I decided just to give the ball back. And my mom and my dad, like, taught, like, taught me that way, so it's kind of just, like, natural. Ian didn't leave that game empty-handed. Moments after giving that ball away, the announcers had a special gift for the fan. A baseball bat signed by his favorite player. Up an autographed bat and a contract for the generous Ian and his buddies. The box was really, really cool. I was like really surprised and like I did not see that coming. He's got good home training. That's a, yeah, that, that's a very well bred young man. If you do good things, good things will happen to you. Reminding us all that often what you give nice going, young man. delivers far more in return than even a little boy could imagine. And so we choose Ian McMillan with a lesson for us all. And we learned late today that after talking to us, he was off to throw out the first pitch at tonight's Diamondbacks game. Go get him, Ian. Yes. And I'm coming to the end of my session. And uh, why the emotional intelligence is important? To lead a happy family life. That is, a family is everything. So to, to lead a um, happy family life, we need a good emotional intelligence. If we take care of our family, our, our society will be happy. If our society is happy, our nation is happy. If our nation is happy, then our world is full of happiness. Yes, Shraddha. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you for such an insightful session. Thank you for letting us know what emotional intelligence is all about. Uh, I have a few questions. Please allow me to ask. Yes, please. Uh, yes. Uh, I wanted to know, ma'am, that how to help small children, like really small, uh, to handle disappointment. Because often they get disappointed in schools when they are not able to get or succeed in a particular thing. So how you will advise those small kids to handle disappointment? Yes, I have an acronym for that, handling that kids. Usually, um, if uh, they don't achieve uh, anything, immediately they feel very bad. Immediately, uh, the kids will be saying, oh, I am very bad. What we will be doing then? No, 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 you are not bad. We will show immediately our uh, sympathy to the kids. We shouldn't do that. We should show our empathy. Empathy means uh, we have to understand their feeling and we have to support them. Uh, they have to feel their uh, feeling. We, we should allow them to feel. Uh, that is the responsibility for them. We should allow them to take the response. The read is the short acronym for that. They have to know their responsibility. And empathy is the understanding. We have to show our um, support to them and the accept. Most of the time we won't accept. See uh, that um, uh, Ram uh, got the first one, but he is not fit for that. Only my kid is very brilliant. Uh, he couldn't get that. We are not accepting the truth. So we have to accept and we have to de for discuss later. We have to keep that issue for later thing. We just support at the moment and uh, let them feel, let them cry. Uh, that is the thing to handle the disappointment with kids. Great, ma'am. Thank you for letting us know about like how small children can handle their disappointments and small failures. Uh, one more question I would like to ask you, ma'am, that uh, there's a kind of sibling rivalry in every family, in every house. And uh, we often see that there's a lack of bonding between siblings. So also because there's a cause called generation gap. So I'll just ask you how you'll advise uh, families and the parents to stop the sibling revelry in their families and how to increase the bond between them? Yes, this is a very nice question. Thank you. Um, usually we live in the society, we want to know uh, usually who is smart and who is popular and which song is uh, best, uh, who is successful, 
and who is talented we label everything mm. but if it, when it comes to our kids i uh, we it increase the competition if we label anything it increase the competition we shouldn't do that labeling that is the first thing then uh, to avoid the sibling rivalry we we have to um, uh, make more family time we make them to play with each other we have to take them for uh, in the holidays we have to take them to tours that is the thing to avoid the sibling rivalry and they should know their uh, the elders eldest one should know his or her responsibility to take care of the family that thing uh, by these things we can avoid that uh, sibling rivalry thank you ma'am thank you for making all my doubts clear and thank you for helping our virtual audience as well with all these uh, queries thank you for such an insightful session you drove back all the points home uh, back so well by taking out time from your busy schedule we're really grateful for it and your presence truly magnified our cause in the best possible way thank you so much ma'am from our team from getty thank you thank you thank you thank you, thank you. Oh, yeah.